when we were students and i am sure many of you seniors here will share my thought there was this entity of obstetric shock we were told obstetric shock but is there anything like that now perhaps not because at the time we did not know about amniotic fluid embolism as a problem many of the other causes of shock that we talk about now were not known then so wherever there was an unexplained shock in obstetrics used to be called obstetric shock there was some mystery we are surrounding it but we used to call it obstetric shock but i think many of them may be at the moment classified under amniotic fluid embolism or some case of anaphylaxis or inversion uterus which you will know only if you examine post mortem or do an autopsy like that coming to the point whatever whether you call it obstetric shock traumatic shock whatever it is shock is a shock and the obstetrician probably has the maximum brand of it the basic problem in shock is a circulatory collapse and what's the purpose of circulation looking at it we all know circulation is to take oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and take back the metabolites to the organs which you will dispose it of like the kidney the liver or the lungs that's the purpose of circulation and shock is basically a failure of the circulation so if circulation fails organs fail so the importance of the circulation has been recognized of late and there has been a paradigm shift in our approach to shock not only in obstetrics critical care medicine as such and all over medical world and that is what we used to be taught and we were training as the abc airway breathing and circulation has been rephrased as cab circulation airway and breathing so if you are alone to resuscitate a patient i don't have assistance your aim should be to re establish circulation if you are not able to look at the airway or the breathing at least re establish circulation that is the best chance of survival of that patient so that is the paradigm shift that has taken in the approach so the outline i thought i just mentioned the few causes that we usually come across what should be our first response then the importance of using the blood which is not in circulation in the patient's own body that's a sequestered blood back into circulation and that is what the demonstration is going to be about and further steps based on the particular etiology and some conclusions the common causes unfortunately even now and as you have been hearing right from the morning hemorrhage stands as the number one cause of shock the number one killer of mothers and if you are looking at from the angle of shock alone amniotic fluid embolism is the other one we will call it the nightmare of our situations you heard a lot about sepsis this morning but what is increasing now is the trauma is a cause of maternal death I don't know whether you have started to experience that but because we audit maternal death in our state unfortunately two of the causes of death that are usually not talked about or realized are one the importance of suicide with the westerners which the westerners have already realized they have changed suicide from as a fortuitous or an incidental cause of maternal death to a direct cause of maternal death in the uk confidential review they have changed suicide deaths from the incidental cause to the direct cause of maternal death unfortunately in our state of kerala also we find the same thing suicide rates as a cause of maternal death is on the increase and the second thing is trauma as a cause of death and the background the reason the large number of automobile accidents pregnant women either <coughs> driving two wheelers or sitting on the front seat of the car or driving themselves the car ending up with fatal accidents 
so trauma as a cause of shock anaphylaxis which again in the pregnancy setting very often its contribution is forgotten unless you really analyze you will do the background by which the or when the patient collapsed you will forget about it you will not realize it and other rare causes so coming to the presentation hemorrhage fortunately in most of the cases there is no diagnostic dilemma there we know that we know that there is the acute collapse and the whole place the floor is full of blood so you know the cause for that even though all of us agree that estimate of blood loss in labor is almost always an underestimate when you look at it you will say oh maybe 1 liter maybe 3 liters so it's an underestimate almost always but what is worse is there can be blood loss which is not obvious <clears throat> and that is concealed hemorrhage as happens in cases of abrupt placenta especially when the placenta is posterior unless you have abruption conscious you will forget about that possibility and unfortunately even ultrasound will not tell us about it because in the posterior wall the probe may not the, the sound waves will not reach so be conscious about it then only you will realize and again massive bleeding intraperitoneally from ectopic especially late ruptures as can happen in cases of rudimentary horn pregnancy and of course rupture uterus so concealed hemorrhage can be a contributor but most of the time unfortunately it is revealed hemorrhage but underestimated so that's how it presents obvious blood loss when it is there we get the reason why the shock has occurred and of course it is supplemented by your observation of pallor tachycardia and tachypnea sunil this morning told us about the importance of the shock index <clears throat> what is easier to remember is the heart rate of a patient should be less than the systolic blood pressure normally if it becomes equal that should worry us if it reverses that should threaten us that unless you act you are going to have problem that's the basic principle of shock index then tachypnea again the point that was highlighted this morning we have forgotten if you look at the muse you see the top was on respiratory rate if you look at our vital record chart that is there the usual nursing record chart respiration one line is there and something will be there and i don't think anybody bothers about what respiration is but subtle changes in the respiration a tachypnea even when the patient is cooperative and talking to us will be the first sign that things are not all right so the importance of respiration and tachypnea is to be realized and as i told you the reversal of ratio of the heart rate to the systolic bp and air hunger altered sensorium and violent behavior or sometimes the patient saying that dot i am going to die like that that feeling that some doom is going to happen these are the signs of insufficient oxygenation as a result of poor oxygen carrying by the circulation to the systems especially to the brain we have had cases where the patient had been behaving abnormally psychiatrist was called in and the reason for the behavior was bleeding and she was getting cerebral anoxia and she then begins to attack bite and all that and people will go and give a valium injection at that time valium will take away the normal human response when you are stressed it takes away the inhibitions of human beings so they begin to behave like animals and they begin to bite and do and all that and immediately call is sent to the psychiatrist saying that this patient who was fine till now is behaving abnormally please come and do. they come and give a midazolam or some uh, something to keep her quiet and finally that will be a permanent quietness so that is what can happen unless we are aware of a patient's abnormal behavior when she is going in for shock the clinical presentation what happens is there is no cardiac fielding if the artery is not pumping blood 
vein cannot bring the blood back and the pregnancy situation especially there is the problem of cavell syndrome so if the heart is not filled heart cannot pump i always say this point you get something to fill the heart because it's the stretch reflex of the myocardium that makes it contract if you don't fill the heart keep it quiet it cannot pump the systolic the contractility of the myometrium is myocardium is taken away and heart will stand still and then you don't have anything so you get something to fill even water is possible if nothing else is possible that heart will pump but if there is nothing to fill the heart heart will not pump that's a basic thing that we all have to realize so even if you are waiting for blood don't wait that pump in fluid something to go in a dilute blood with hemoglobin 2 grams is still much better than no blood reaching because the heart has stopped pumping so that's the importance of the hemorrhage as a cause amniotic fluid embolism sudden collapse preceded by very often patient saying that some problem i am not feeling well or chest discomfort they complain about breathing difficulty they complain about and a brief spell of convulsions this is the usual presentation that we have got in patients who clinically we have diagnosed as having amniotic fluid embolism as the cause of death unfortunately even now there is no clear test which can tell us that this was the cause of death amniotic fluid embolism no laboratory evidence autopsy is not really effective because finding squames and dandruff hair in the circulation is present is there even in normal people so that is not by itself it's an apparent reaction to that that causes it so it's a very difficult diagnosis to make we go by clinical grounds and amniotic fluid embolism is diagnosed on clinical grounds only even now but very often it will follow to be followed by a dic and once dic sets in then the bleeding continues and it slowly becomes like a hemorrhagic cause of death a cause of shock and then she goes in for cardiac arrest because of the reasons we mentioned sepsis you heard a lot about sepsis this morning but what i have to again bring to your attention is revealed or concealed it can be and it's a concealed sepsis that kills if she is pouring pus we all be alerted we will do something about it but sometimes there will be litters of pus and we will not realize what is situation an obese patient superficially skin looks fine but unless you feel the wound get the induration you will not realize that behind that it is a bag of pus there induration and then put in a mosquito through the wound even if it is subcuticular you can put in a mosquito pus will come out the earlier you drain the pus the better the outcome if you don't what will happen is pus will work its way up and up and what you we call necrotizing fasciitis will occur and once it spreads beyond a level then you know the consequence of it so palpate the wound rather than go and say hello okay fine post operative day just palpate the wound of course you should not be carrying infection from one to the other so you have your hand rub feel the wound when you go for rounds rather than just is a smile and come away because then past the can be missed unless you feel and look for the induration and the other one of course is the missing infection in case of pprom we have had cases where dead fetuses and pprom have been the cause of chorioamnionitis and death dead fetuses in previous cesarean because of the reluctance to do a repeat cesarean go on waiting and finally infected PPROM go on in conservative management without watching for signs clinical signs of infection ascending infection ending up in sepsis so these are the other things we have to watch out for and as was clearly mentioned this morning we may not get much time on our side to identify this unless we are conscious about that possibility and urinary tract infection also has a cause trauma i already mentioned cause may be obvious in most of the cases but you have to think about the concealed variety of trauma patient may be okay but there may be a spleen rupture there may be a uterine rupture and also placenta can separate without your knowledge so that's about trauma as a cause and if like this the the tricky thing here is patient would have received the same drug once before and the second injection so nobody will call, think that as the cause of the anaphylaxis we had three patients dying like that patient had one injection no problem so second injection was just pushed in and they just went away and the infection as usual given patient later collapsing 
and we did not realize that this is the cause because already have given this drug before so anaphylaxis should occur the first time no anaphylaxis can occur subsequent times as well and uh, rare causes we don't want to dwell on that like cardiac causes cardiomyopathy very part of cardiovascular other problems like the vessels rupturing dissection dissecting aneurysm all these are relatively rare and of course rupture of other viscera like the spleen but the first four or five that we mentioned are the ones what should be our first steps the quick assessment ensure that surroundings are safe for it this is not applicable to the hospital setting but if you are seeing somebody on the street or surrounding you have to protect the patient and yourself suppose it is uh, knocked out knocked down by a motorcycle or something on the street you should not stand there in the middle of the road and try to rescue the next car will run over you as well so safe surroundings should be ensured first and then call for help these are the first steps that we have to be taking and then as i told you earlier circulation and for circulation it's only one thing cardiac compression all of us should learn even if you are 70 plus even if you are 16 or 17 year old all of us have to know how to give a cardiac compression how to hold your hand how to use the heel of your hand how to keep your elbow straight and how to use the weight of your upper body to give that compression at the rate of at least 100 per minute and that's not easy we cannot continue to do it especially at somebody like my age we cannot continue to do it but we have to because until help comes that's the only thing that may keep that person alive so what are you doing you are using the sternum to go down and press on the heart which acts like a bellow push out the blood allow that to come back refill again you go in there so we all have to learn and practice in other words basic life support all of us practice in obstetrics have to at least have this basic experience of complaining that when additional help is available think of the other things like airway and breathing but first thing is cardiac so that's the difference the paradigm shift as i mentioned iv lines the life lines we call it proper iv lines the life lines for the patient and as you insert the iv lines take blood blood for investigation especially to the blood bank connect monitors and then see what type if the cardiac arrest has occurred what type of an arrest it is whether it is systolic or ventricular fibrillation and depending on that think about cardioversion and urinary catheter the importance was already mentioned earlier and then think about addressing the primary cause later on i think it is tomorrow i will have the lecture where i'll tell you a paradigm shift in approach to hemorrhage that is before you reach this short stage once you have a collapsed patient first aim is to cardiac compress but before that if she is bleeding your first aim should be to stop the bleeding what can we do for that i will tell you tomorrow okay if you come tomorrow um special aspects about shock in pregnancy is the possibility of supine hypotension what will happen if you have a pregnant woman with a uterus like that and compressing the it is not actually the aorta but the vena cava and the predilection for gastric regurgitation and aspiration mendelson syndrome think of the baby there is a live baby see whether that baby has to come out to survive or rather than be inside in a shocked mother and die baby also and of course think of perimortem cesarean section perimortem cesarean section what do you need for that a knife all that you need is a knife take the baby out no question of painting no question of drapes no question of this and that perimortem other this not having pain so that's it we have to be mentally set for that of course further steps based on the etiology the first thing is arrest the bleeding and transvaginal uterine artery clamp hopefully i will show you tomorrow and if the abdomen is already open aorta clamp you already heard sunil mentioning about the patient where i was assisting in a placenta previa percreta where for no reason they put an incision on the fundus part of the placenta separated and she started to pour out and under our own eyes we could see how much blood was bleeding and the only thing was put a clamp to the aorta that is the bleeding and the pulse immediately went up and they have it all recorded that is why sunil is always mentioning that and of course the aorta is the abdomen is open put the aorta clamp the abdomen is not open 
and you have nothing else is pouring the aim is to compress per abdomen compress the aorta and it's not that easy with an obese patient recently pregnant or pregnant patient like that if there is a traumatic of course stop the bleeding for which you may apply packed tamponade if uterus is tonic and bleeding of course we discussed this morning about the relevance of oxytocin arrange blood and blood products and alert the massive transmission protocol mtp another expansion for mtp isn't it it's not medical termination of pregnancy alone there are acronyms in our specialty which has different meanings and mtp the importance of termination of pregnancy is not the one in this context it is the massive transmission protocol and as sunil mentioned all labor rooms should have a massive transmission protocol the point is when the patient is pouring out the obstetrician cannot take the list and find out what the number of the lab blood bank officer is find the donors who are o positive and all that it should be taken over by other people that is massive transmission protocol with hemorrhage um, then hemostatic procedures we already mentioned and showed you some of the videos how to stop the bleeding from the uterus the importance of breast stitch and internal iliac artery ligation and you already heard what can be done by interventional radiology to stop the bleeding and then amniotic embolism that is what you have in very often is a result of hyperstimulation and of course unfortunately very often combined with vasodilators being used drugs like epidocin trofavirin being used late in labor keeping the vessels open asking the amniotic fluid please come my way like this to my circulation that is what the vasodilators are doing late in labor so please stop using them and hemorrhage and shock are final common pathway for hemorrhage of course amniotic fluid embolism i told you and sepsis so for almost all of these final common pathway and of course consider perimortem cesarean section sepsis already mentioned surviving sepsis campaign you already heard so i just rush through the care bundles the first 3 hours the importance that has been to be brought out is the importance of lactate lactate reflects the metabolic state that is why send blood for lactate immediately you already heard about that and of course other investigations like culture starting antibiotics early and broad spectrum antibiotic you already heard repeatedly that mentioned and small dose of steroids the second 3 hour bundles further fluids the important thing is fluid challenge as they call it 1 liter in half an hour run it in and that will tell us how good the system is whether we can respond and of course monitor other organ functions and use vasopressors if required and then the 24 hours was 24 hours for the stabilization remove the dead tissue or abscess if it is to be drained drain it and then support organ functions further if she needs dialysis give her dialysis or renal transplantation uh, renal perfusion you do that if it is trauma based on the type of injury you have to decide but remember the problem if it's already say run over and no chance of survival think about saving the baby or even if it is not for the baby reducing the bulk of the uterus will help in circulation being better and so perimortem cesarean section and then if it is more than 28 weeks consider saving the baby as well anaphylaxis of course adrenaline is the first line think of hydrocortisone as well and then remove the offending medication so in conclusion what i have to convey to you friends are obstetricians have to keep up the skills as i told you basic life support and then interest somebody to document the steps properly time wise let it be a nursing student or somebody who cannot help much here but ask her to write i am doing this at this time so many so and so called at this time blood order at this time because at the end of the day you cannot time it properly get somebody to write it that's the most valuable document you can sit down later after the patient is saved sit down and write in length but this document will be the one that will save you to protect yourself and more important as was mentioned this morning the legal climate under which we are working getting the relatives involved in knowing what is happening and the decision making when they know that you are doing your best to save the patient then they will be with you even if something unfortunate has happened of course it need not be the case always they will try to find fault with you for whatever even with good intentions you do but at least that's the best that we can do and get the relatives involved and informed in decision making now a couple of slides only about the NASG or the non pneumatic anti shock garment or the life wrap as it is called and you will have a demonstration by my colleagues here uh, but the basic principle is only this 
even when a patient is going in for shock there is part of the circulation where blood is there but not getting into the circulation blood is coming back to circulation through the main vessels main veins but there can be massive amount pooled in the veins in the muscle in the buttocks and parts in the abdomen so the whole principle of nasg uh, suelen miller who promoted it and i am know that there are so many strong advocates and uh, pioneers i should say the disciples here in bangalore we who go around and promote it so that is the principle of it it's cheap reusable and of course can be taught even to non medical persons and so we would certainly think about it unfortunately it cannot work on an individual level it has to be the system because all the whole system especially the ambulance service should take it up then only it will work well but that's it thank you very much <laughs>